This lesson we saw, in the previous lesson, we saw how we've got still a few bugs that are happening within our application. So we need to take care of those. We need to be able to lock out play. So let's call it play lockout. And we'll set that to false. So basically, I want to use this, val this variable in order to lock out play. So once we've done our picking of the cards, and now we've got the second card, uh, let's lock out the play. Uh, so we're going to just do play lockout, and we'll do true. And then once we're clearing the interval, and actually if we have a match, then we're going to do play lockout equals false, because we want uh, the continued play. And uh, so we want that to come back here once we clear the interval, and we're going to go back to false here. So basically, all of these should lock out the play. And lastly, let's uh, just make sure that we're accounting for it. So we have play lockout is equal to and that should be an and play lockout and basically so play lockout is false uh, so let's uh, try this out again so basically now we shouldn't be able to pick more than two cards because uh, we're locked out so it's still checking to see if it's in the array but it's not allowing us to pick more than two cards uh, something's still wrong here. We're able to still pick way too many, and there's still a few bugs in this. Uh, so we're not able to pick out anything else, adding it into the array. Uh, so maybe what we want to do, so basically it's telling us it's in the array. So let's, uh, before we add to this array, Let's, uh, let's take a look and we'll take a closer look to see actually what's happening within the array. So every time we add to the array, let's uh, see what's actually in, contained within the array. So go back over to the dev console, click not in array, not in array. So we see that now we've got these cards in the array and it doesn't seem to be adding it into the array properly the first time. So we know that there's there's a bug there, so something is uh, is going wrong there, because uh, we've only got the one item in the array. And actually, the reason is because we're doing the console log afterwards. So let's go back. Uh, so we've got the two items in the array, and now we've got in array. So something something is uh, is going wrong there because it's not allowing us to set the next one, and the reason for that is because we're still so we've got the card flipped, uh, so we need to remove that one that the card flipped has to go back to negative one. So this is another one that uh, needs to be reset, and we could actually probably do a function for this as well. So removing that lockout. So that was the reason there. So let's, uh, and sometimes it is very helpful to log stuff into the console. So now we see that we are locked down to just the two cards and it's not allowing us to click anything else. And now let's, uh, let's see if we can get a match And maybe we could do this a little bit quicker. So hopefully this time I got a match and I do have a match. Uh, so we're, we're actually looking at and we're seeing that these are cards zero and cards one. So it's actually not uh, allowing us to compare the matches. Uh, so this is one of the issues here. Uh, so we need to actually find out about what the source is of these and we need to compare those instead of comparing those IDs. Uh, that are the last ones. So let's uh, let's take care of that. So we see that if this one is equal to that, but we know that these are simply returning back uh, the IDs. And I know this is probably getting a little bit long, so I'm just trying to think of our best way to shorten that. 
Now I could do get element by ID and source and check to see if the sources are correct. Uh, so we could do that as well. Uh, so maybe, and we could just simply do something where we actually return back the source. So instead of having those, let's create a brand new function. And uh, this one, what this will do, check source. And basically it's gonna return back the source. So we'll take in the parameter here. And what we're gonna do is return back the value of V. Uh, so now we just need to set variable V and let's grab the source of that item that's passed in. So we can do document get element by ID and this will return back the source. So instead of vid, we're just gonna do source. And now, just to, to wrap these values, I know that they're getting kind of long and I usually try to avoid this, but I think that uh, it's just because I, I gave them such long, long names that uh, that's why it's turning out to be very long there. Uh, so let's, um, let's check to see if this actually works. Uh, so now we can see if there's a match. So let's go back out, refresh the page, clear that console. So we've got a bird there and we've got the parrot. Next, we've got a cat and a bird. And this time, so we got a match there and we see that the match comes in. So uh, now we're able to move on and continue to play out the game. So two cats, we've got a match. Well, we can see that it's being added into the array and we get unlocked. So that was a good guess there. And not a whole lot of tiles left, but everything seems to be working pretty good. Uh, so now we need a way to finish the game off and be able to tell if the users completed the game. Uh, so that is coming up in the next lesson where we're going to check the length of this array. And if the length of the array is over 12, then we know our game is finished and we've got all of the matches and everything's found and we can end the gameplay uh, and then add the start button again so the user can once again start again. So that is coming up in the next lesson. And what I want you to do before the next lesson is go through the source code, try it out for yourself and see all the different functionality that we've done. Uh, try to uh, get these elements, this element information, take a closer look at what's actually being passed in the arrays and these different values as we've worked through quite a bit of logic in the previous lessons. And we know that this one here, it's not in array. It should say that uh, already clicked or something like that. Uh, so maybe we can even pass a message to the user that uh, you don't need to click it anymore. So we can do a whole bunch of bug fixes and some additions to the game. So try it out for yourself first. Link to this message here that we've got within the HTML already. So set up the link to the message object, add it in as an object and then pass out instead of in the console, pass some information to the user within the gameplay. And I'll show you how to do that in the next lesson.